Various. Various. But I think, really, pride. You know, I'm proud, of, I'm proud of everything that they've done. I think they've been, I think they've been fantastic, the players. Again, the support was, was brilliant. Hi, Mark. You must feel very proud of your team and your players and very disappointed with that VAR call. Yeah, but if it's, if it's, if it's the right call, it's the right call. So, um, look, I think, go back to the start of the game. I think, you know, when we were looking at United, they've got some, I mean, the blistering on a counter-attack. So you've got to be... You've got to be careful how soon you open up, and if you open up too soon, they can then destroy your confidence for the rest of the game. So we had to be careful a little bit, sort of uh, uh, trying to block spaces and, and trying to make them have to work really hard to create anything. And, and, and I thought we'd done that to a degree, but really didn't participate in the game as an attacking force for the, you know, for the first half, really. Um, you know you've got to stay in the game, and then you can make changes afterwards. But um, first goal, you can concede a goal. They've started to move it. McTominay playing, obviously, he's not trained all week. Apparently, he's played trained Friday and then Saturday, and then then he's played today. But you know he gives them something different because he runs through the game. Bruno Fernandez tries to control the game. Main, who's a young kid who's come in that, that looks like a real talent. Um, you know, so you, you've got. Hoyland up front, who's a physical specimen but runs and presses. You know, you've got you've got a load of different. Um, you're talking about what upwards of 60, 70, 80 million pound each of them. You know, so th there's the, the Rashford off that that left hand side who's got blistering pace. So if you open up and give him any space, then you know. So we've got to be in positions to try and block off um, before we can start to build. So when we got the ball back, we gave it away too too quickly. So we couldn't build anything. Ball gets played up to the strikers, and it was getting turned over too quick, and, and then they were penning us in. So you can see the first one, and then obviously gets a half time, you know, one nil's not too much of a disaster. But to concede the second one, like we did, was really poor. Um, uh, and that's just people switching off and not doing the jobs. But, you know, I think we were sort of coming to terms with the game at that point. Second half made a change in terms of the, the setup, but. We were starting to come to terms with that change and how it was going to impact, uh, or how we were going to try and impact the game in a positive way. And then we concede the third goal, and then just as I'm trying to, we're trying to get ready to make changes again uh, to give us some attacking threat. So um, three nil down, and then we start to play a little bit, which is, you know, you look at it and it's easier to play when you're three nil down. That's what my managers used to say to me. And um, we ended up getting a really good goal, actually. Fabio Tavares puts the ball in and Ellis just uh, sweeps it into the net. And that sort of looked like it could be a consolation, but, you know, it was a really good goal, well worked. Um, but the second one where Callum O'Hare hits it and it, I think it comes off Wan-Bissaka's shoulder and loops up into the net, and you're a goal away from that, then it just gets everybody's tails up, the supporters are involved, and, and that's what we were after. And, you know, we ended up making some... Uh, or it was much, much better. They started to drop away, but they, you know, in certain areas of that field there, uh, they'd started to go. They looked, they were leggy. So we were trying to exploit that, and uh, we ended up getting the penalty and th for three, three, and that's where things started to get really interesting, didn't it? And uh, you know, they've hit the bar, we've hit the bar, we've scored the goal that was given offside for, I think it was a toenail offside. You know, so that was disappointing. But I think psychologically, that may have had an impact on that, because you're 20 seconds away from going to an FA Cup final, and and then 30 seconds later, you're in a penalty shootout, and and, and it sort of can put you on the back foot a little bit. Um, but there's no seriously no criticism with anybody who who shows the courage to pick up the ball and have a have a go from a, a penalty in that cauldron, really. So it was what it was. Is what it is. We've got to move on, and uh, I just think I'm really proud of everybody. You know, players, staff, supporters were absolutely outstanding. This this FA Cup run will be spoken about certainly in in Coventry City circles for a long, long time. So, whilst I'm disappointed for everybody, um, we can't be too down about it. We've shown we've shown we've gone toe to toe with the Manchester United side when we're three 0 down and come back to three three and almost won it with a fourth. Uh, and lose it on a penalty shootout, which can happen, as we know. 
sorry, um, Mark, you just analysed the game. What what emotions do you go through, especially in the the cauldron of you know a last minute penalty and the goal at the end and the penalties? As a manager, what are the emotions that you go through? Various, various. But I think really pride. You know, I'm proud. Of, I'm proud of everything that they've done. I think they've been. I think they've been fantastic. The players, again, the support was was brilliant. You know, I think really when they, well, if we're three 0 down, I think if it was the other way around and we'd gone three 0 down, I don't think that'd have been the same. You know, but it, the, the support were absolutely fantastic, brilliant, uh, great atmosphere. Uh, the emotions you go through a whole range of emotions, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I've got to say I'm really proud of what they've done. Mark, you had the same thing with the penalties, if I'm not mistaken, against Luton last year, where they kick towards their fans and they kick first. And statistically, the side kicking first seems to win many more. Do you think it's too skewed in favour of one side that in a big game like this? What do you suggest? That you toss one coin and the team says, OK, we'll kick first, and then the losing team kicks towards their fans. It is what it is. You've got to, you've got to deal with it. I mean, yeah. It could be, but you've got to deal with it. It's really difficult. Um, had we had he cut his toenail, we wouldn't have been talking about penalties. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you know. Any given day that we can perform like that, because we, we we perform like Manchester United, you know, for that for that last half of the last hour, um, and that's what I'm proud of. You know, I'm, I'm proud of that. I think um, the quality that we showed, you know, the way that we moved the ball, the way that we showed courage getting on the ball and playing through them, playing round them, getting good quality in the box, having chances, great execution. I mean, Torpy's shot. That O'Neill had to save. I mean, if that had gone in, that was, uh, that, yeah, that would have been special. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm just proud of, of the way that they, they took to the game. But if you do that from the start, if you can do that from the start, then, and I think there's a bit of sort of the unknown, you know, because you don't know, you don't play against that opposition every week. Um, it just gives you a little bit, it takes a bit of time to sort of grow into the game. But by that stage, it's really difficult you know, especially if you go goals down to come back. So, you know, really all the more impressive for that. So they were really good, really good for the last hour. I'm really proud of it because that's more like us. That we, that, that was, you know, more of a swashbuckling performance, really. That's what, and I said that that's how Manchester United usually play. Mark, um, I wanted to ask you, um, Pep Guardiola sat here yesterday saying he had to put his players on ice after his match and, and was complaining about the scheduling. Coventry have actually played more games and now you've had 120 minutes here as well. What do you need to do to the players after? And uh, do you, do you, is the scheduling actually worse for Coventry City than it is for some of these <laughs> big boys? Yeah, nice question. Um, for me, the, the calendar is the calendar. You've just got to get on with it. We've got a really small squad. You know, we haven't got 150 players to choose from. We haven't. I think, um, you know, we've got a, an academy that's got a finite amount of players there. We've got, we brought Josh Eccles through, who played in the, in the first half, but came off in the second half. And um, Kai Andrews is a young player that's 18, just 18, that's been on the bench, and he's only had a little bit of a couple of cameos. But, you know, we've got a, we've got a really tight uh, group and... Uh, Tatsu Sakamoto hurt his back in, I think it was February time, and, and he's been out with, with that back injury since. Uh, Jamie Allen's only just sat on the bench today. He's trained twice, you know, since a fractured a cheekbone against um, Sheffield Wednesday in the in the in one of the earlier rounds. And um, it affects us, you know, that really affects us. It hurts us. So we've got to try and add that depth, a little bit more depth and a bit more quality, and then we'd be able to cope with things a little bit better. Um, but when you're talking about that level, when you're talking about Pep Guardiola's level and, and uh, Eric Ten Hag's level, the way that they play, they've got to play at that level every week and there's expectation alongside it as well. So you can understand from their perspective um, why 
they say what they say because they have to be at that level. They have to win. You know, it's as simple as that. And I think that that's, that's the difference, although we still have to win, you know, but it's, it's the same but different, if you know what I mean. It's, uh, there isn't as much scrutiny in the championship, although there is, and there's so many managers lose the jobs in, in, that, uh, in that atmosphere and, and uh, environment. And it's, it's really difficult. It's not easy. You know, the job's not easy at any level. And, and certainly, lower down the pyramid you go, it gets more and more difficult. The challenges are different, but, you know, you've still got to win football matches. And um, that's why today, you know, that, it, today will hurt. You know, you look back on it and it will hurt because it was so close, really so close. But we've had that, we've had that before in the summer. We were so close to being a Premier League team and uh, it just didn't happen for us. So we can't feel sorry for ourselves. We've just got to get on with it and keep, and keep building, as, as you say, Andy. It's brilliant for the club. It's brilliant because when you're looking to kick on, when you're looking to recruit, you know, hopefully that, uh, that just... I mean, it, it, the club's been in the doldrums for so long. Um, you know, it, it, we're certainly out of that. We're certainly out of that period and we've got to... You know, we've just got to keep moving it forward, which is why we won't, we won't feel sorry for ourselves. You know, we won't allow that to happen and we'll just move on and um, move past it and, you know, try and build into an exciting end to the season for ourselves to then go again next season because next season again we've got to recruit again we've got to start to look at what we can do from this point onwards and, and have a really good look at that um, to see where we can go um, but again you know really that's for the future today is just dealing with what's just happened and, and uh, getting ready for Wednesday Uh, yeah, he was injured, yeah. It was his ankle, but I don't know. I mean, he just wasn't moving right. You know, he wanted to stay on, but he, he just wasn't moving right. So I think he was, uh, he was certainly not, not right. So we had to try and make that change there because that right-hand side was looking really profitable for us. They were brilliant, honestly. The, the, the lads who came in... Um, picked up that mantle and really had a go. And I think they showed, you know, the disappointment. That clearly, they'd have been disappointed not to be starting the game. Um, but they've given themselves a real chance for the rest of the season now and moving forward. So, honestly, I'm really, really pleased with with the day's work from uh, from the boys. But, yeah, it's really, really unfortunate. But the supporters, like I say, the supporters were a massive part of that and they'll remember that for a long time. Any more? Okay. Hi Mark. Uh, Sims's goal today takes him to the top of the top, um, the top of the top scorer leaderboard for the FA Cup. Um, just a few words on what do you think about his development this season, and what he's brought to the team. Uh, well, he's uh, he take it, took a little bit of time to settle in. Um, again, with Ellis, there is loads to come. There's still loads of development in him. Um, you know, he's one of those that we talk about. You know, belief and. He's got all the attributes to be a, a really, really good player. He scored against United, he scored, and so has Hadji, but, you know, Callum O'Hare, they've, they've scored against United, scored against Wolves. You know, Ellis has, previous to this competition, he was the only player that we had that had scored a Premier League goal when he was at Everton, and scored against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And um, It's just confidence. Confidence, breed, you know, breeds those performances. It's... Um, it's really good to see because he'd, he'd had a little bit of a slow start. You know, what happens with a slow start is people start to doubt and, and give you stick. And, and really, there's, uh, with social media being a cruel place, you should probably opt out um, and not take part in that. So, you know, he's been fantastic. He's been brilliant. He's got his head down. He's worked hard. He's, he's listened. Uh, and it's funny, you know, the, the harder he works, the better he looks, you know. So he's just got to keep working hard because he's got all those attributes there that will come out. Hi, Mark. Can I just ask, were you surprised with how Manchester United fell away 
And then did you take that into your team talk before extra time? Because you seem to be the ones creating the better chances as well in extra time. Well, you feel the rhythm of the game. You know, the rhythm of the game changed and goals changed games and, and the fact that we were able to get back in it because they, they, they thought they'd won, you know, 3-0, you 3-0 know, three nil, three nil up. You can forgive them for thinking that. Um, but then things changed. You know, you get back into it with two goals and you're only one away and, and, and the mentality changed and then they start to tire. You know, the, the biggest thing for us was we started to make them work. You know, and if you don't, and they allow them the ball, and it's easy for when you're in possession of the ball, it's it's really easy. If you're out of possession of the ball and you've got to run, you've got to work. That's difficult. Psychologically, it's different. And and I, and, I'm, and I thought they worked really hard in the first in the first half. I thought they worked hard to win the ball back from us. I thought they they worked really hard with their line. They were they were really high. They, they, they pinned us in. When we won it back, you know you've got a little bit more time, but we rushed it. We gave the ball away too quickly, which means that you then open a little bit, and uh, that that hurt us. But you know, I think that what we did better was when we made the changes. We kept we kept it better, and we were able to have it for for longer, which made them move, which gave us the the openings to, that, that we needed to sort of get forward and get into good positions to create. And once we'd done that, you know, they felt some quality which was which was brilliant for us because that's what you need them to feel so any opponent you've got to make them feel that you know otherwise they, they keep coming forward but you've got to try and put them on a back foot a little bit and it took us a little bit too long to do that you know and that's you know maybe maybe a bit of a regret at the start but you've still got to grow into it we just lost 3-0 last week to, to Birmingham City and you know we looked a little bit like psychologically we needed a bit of a boost you know, in terms of that confidence building in, into the game, which is why we set about the game as we did, knowing you can make those changes. If you're a goal down, if you're two goals down, even you're still you're still in there. If you can get uh, get a goal, and obviously for us, even if you're three goals down, you've got a chance. So, yeah, they, honestly, I can't say I'm I'm really proud of them because they've they've gone toe to toe with United and put them on the back foot and created a load of chances that. It meant we scored three goals at Wembley. It, you know, for us moving forward and for the players that have taken part today, should give them a load of confidence.